Well, hello there, boys and girls, and welcome to a, uh, a certain episode, type of episode I've never really done before. This is going to be kind of a test, uh, just to kind of try out the format and see how well it works. It's just kind of an idea I had, uh, and a lot of these things that I'm going to talk about are real things that I had no idea about. So, oh, just by the way, this is a, uh, this is the top five things in all of old school runescape that the game does not even tell you about so many of these things i had to figure out the hard way after many hours of doing them incorrectly and just wasting because this game's all about efficiency right so we want to do things as quickly as possible as easily as possible and as efficiently as possible so hopefully some of the things i talk about in this video will help you as well some of the earlier ones you may know about and if you do that's okay but i bet there's probably one in here that you didn't know about some of them are super uh, like very just like super uh, you know uh, niche like I don't know how you would figure out about this besides just hearing it from somebody like me you're welcome so let's get right into this so boys and girls here's the top five things that old school runescape does not tell you um, and if people c could quit ruining my shot that'd be great so the first thing I want to talk about is something that if you're if you've played for a while you probably know some form of this but temporary skill boost this is something the game doesn't really talk about much it's just kind of something that advanced players know about they know that you can boost your skills without actually leveling them up because there are some very high requirements in this game say for achievement diaries or for if you need a quest some quest things you can boost for some you cannot that's a whole other topic for another video but there are multiple different ways to go about boosting your skills temporarily that a lot of people don't know about so for example one thing that most people always know about or you always hear about are spicy stews so I have a stew right here and some spice so you have to have completed a portion of recipe for disaster to uh, to do this you have to have completed the evil Dave sub quest to unlock the hell rats which you uh, then unlocks the spices so essentially what it does is there are four different colors yellow orange red and uh, brown I think and they all will raise different stats but it's random so you can range from zero to five uh, plus boost or you can even lose some of the boost like you can lose two levels temporarily now it's not permanent so right here I have a yellow spice I have four doses you have to put in three of something in a stew to make it uh, work so, or, or, or you could do two, but if you want the most, uh, the most benefit, I suppose. So, like, see if I do one of these uh, doses of yellow into the spicy stew. If you see there, we are gonna, we have a potential to gain plus one in prayer, plus one in agility, thieving, slayer, and hunter. See the minus below. We could also lose plus one. So, if I use another one, now that plus one goes to plus three, and then the maximum is three doses. So, we have a potential to gain or lose. Five levels temporarily in Prayer, Agility, Thieving, and Slayer, and Hunter. That's just for yellow. There's all kinds... There's the three other different colors I told you about that raise a whole different uh, category of levels. So, let's say um, there's an achievement diary for cutting a magic tree, right? In Lumbridge, I believe. So, let's say you only have 70 wood cutting. So, you put doses of this into a spicy stew, and then you have a chance... To gain five levels temporarily to chop it without having to train the extra five levels and get the achievement diary and get the reward sooner than you normally would now I know like I said a lot of people do know about temporary skill boosting but there are so many different ways that a lot of people don't know about so like for example there's the randomness of the spices and the stew let's just let's just see what happens by the way if we drink this what do we get so look up in the corner so all that happened was I gained three slayer levels and I lost an agility level after all that possibility that's what happened that's why a lot of people don't like to use spicy stews because they're so random now if you want more of a guaranteed thing you can make things like there's like a bunch of pie so like this garden pie here that is a guaranteed plus three boost for farming so like I did for my spirit trees I have 96 you chomp half of this and you get automatically three temporary skill boosts in farming. Now, obviously, like I said, it's only temporary, and that is uh, only there are only a few things that are like that. Um, a lot of people just like the use of the pies or like the super attacks, the super defense, because they're a guaranteed. It may not be as high as a plus five, but you know what you're gonna get. And there's also things that provide a passive bonus. So like in the uh, the Hasidious, um, the far, uh, no, the sorry, the Woodcutting Guild, that is a passive invisible plus seven boost. So you are not seeing that boost. It's not erasing your skill level. 
It's just acting like your skill level is seven times higher in the woodcutting guild. Or, for example, when you're building with construction and you have the crystal saw from the quest in the gnome place. I can't think of the name. The runecrafting quest. Uh, what lies below? I can't remember. You get this crystal saw. When you use it, you gain a passive plus three construction level. So let's say what you're trying to build requires, for example, 63 construction. I only have 60. But you use this crystal saw, and you boost right up to 63. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. So that's a couple of different ways of uh, that you can boost your skills. Like I said, I know that one is kind of common knowledge, but a lot of people don't know about it, and the game doesn't really tell you that you can do this. And that is the point of this video, is to point out things that the game literally just kind of lets you figure out on your own. Hopefully that saves you some time. So there is number, I guess, five. We're going to start from the bottom. Let's move on to number four. Oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot there is one other thing about skill boosting that I know people don't know about because I just found this out not too long ago. I think they fixed it a little bit, but you used to be able to do this for a, a longer period of time, but you can still do it. So let's say you're boosting your skills. So let's say, uh, let, let's say I needed my farming at 99, but I wasn't quite at the, the, the patch to plant the tree. If you log out and then log back in, you will not, your stat restore will not go down for another 12 seconds. So let's say you're running, you're running, you're running, your skill's about to go back down because you're about to lose the boost. You log out, then you log back in, you have another 12 second grace period to get to where you need to be before your skill will go down. And you can continue to do that until you get where you need to be. Now it's only 12 seconds, I believe. It used to be longer, but I think they patched it. But you can still do it a little bit. So there's a little tidbit I know will help some people. Okay, so number four is something that uh, I don't think some people will know about if you're, especially if you're a non-member, you won't know about this because this guy is kind of a construction guy. But this guy right here, Files, he will unnote any items you have in your inventory. So, like, let's say you're doing some construction here because construction requires lots of planks. And you can't carry, obviously, you'll, you have a limited inventory space here. So, let's say you're building something and you want to run. Instead of having to worry about getting a butler or anything like that, you talk to this Files guy, you just use your your bank notes on him and he will unnote them for a price you can do one at a time you can do five at a time or you can do, and it's not very expensive so he'll uh, unnote all of my teak planks here for 35 coins and then there we go now I can continue to b go back to my house build what I need to build come back out here repeat the process very good for construction training um, I'm pretty sure he's the only NPC that will do that there might be one oh there's the bank note exchange merchant in Pollen Beach he will also do that but this one is more useful for construction the other one in Pollen Beach can be used for other skills in that area but this is the guy that most people know about so if you ever have things that you need to unnote and you're around the area for whatever reason you just talk to files and he will do it for a very small fee he is mostly like I said used for construction for construction training rather and uh, that's just kind of his main purpose but there is a Another one that literally no one tells you about this guy. There are so many NPCs in this game that are useless. Have useless flavor text, just garbage all around. He is one of the few that is actually fairly important. So, there's that. Let's move on to number three. Alright, so number three is going to take us to the Grand Exchange. And there's actually a, a lot of NPCs around here that can give you helpful information. But one in particular is very, uh, very important. That and, and this was one thing I had no idea about. I had heard that you could do this, but it really never clicked with me what it meant or anything like that. So this guy right over here, uh, Bob Barter, he will decant potions for you. Now, if you don't know what that means, if you look at his little options right here, decant... He will basically, let's say you need them split up into different doses, or let's say you have a bunch of three dose potions, and he will unnote them and put them into however it works, whatever you want. So let's say you have a bunch of random assorted garbage, and you want to fill them all up into four doses to free up your bank space or to make things just more organized or more, you know, whatever. He will take what you have, and he will put them all into four doses for you. Very nice, very easy. Uh, like I said, this guy's kind of out in the open, and it's very, like, I mean, he's not hidden, but again, instead of having to do it all manually, this will save you the time, and just make your life a whole lot easier. Nothing in the game tells you about this man, other than that he is just standing there. Also, what, what does decant mean? Is, and it, it what? It's, and he's, he's the herb guy. Why isn't he the potion guy? Jagex, what are you doing, man? There's also one other guy that will do this in Narda, but I think he might cost more? I don't know for sure, but there's uh, Mr. Bob Barter. <laughs> I just got that pun. He will decant your potions for a small fee. 
All right, and speaking of Narda, number two is going to take us to this isolated desert land. And this one's kind of a double feature because I was talking about Sahur here earlier. This is the person that will also decant your potions, but the difference between her is she will also clean herbs that you cannot. Now, why would you want to do this? Other than being lazy, there's not really a whole lot of a reason to because if you can clean the herb... Or if you can make a potion with the herb, you can clean it. So there's really no point, like I said, literally on just being lazy. But here's an example. So see, I have 70 herb lore, okay? So if I want to clean these torstals, I need 75. Now, I can't make any potions with them anyway, but if I just want it, because I have like 200 in the bank, if I don't want to sit there and manually click all those myself, you just come over here. She will clean them for me for 200 coins each, so it's pretty expensive. But uh, there we go. Now I have three clean torstals. So... If I'm being extra lazy one day, because you get, I mean, and you don't get any experience for it either, but, you know, it might save you some time. Now, this guy's also, I'm going to combo him in with her, with her, because this guy's completely different. So, see, he's, he's messing with his pestle and mortar. Again, nobody tells you about Mr. Wesley here, but he will crush items for you, which you don't get any experience for. So, let's say, for a uh, energy potion, you need to crush chocolate bars. So, you buy 500 chocolate bars from the Grand Exchange or whatever, but you still need to crush them all with the pestle and mortar. And you get zero experience for that. You can go over to this guy. And now let's say you're an Iron Man and can't use the Grand Exchange. He will crush them all for you. Save you the time. Save you the wasted energy. He'll do it for a small fee. Great for Iron Man. Mr. Wesley here. Alright. So there's number two. We will move on to number one. And I think probably the biggest deal. I don't think a lot of people know about this. Because I just found out about this recently. And I've been playing this game for years. So you know how when you're doing farming runs right. Between all the millions of herb patches. All the millions of other flower patches you have. The bush patches. Your inventory gets pretty full pretty fast, right? Instead of having to run back and forth to a million different banks, or even if you have, uh, in the farming guild, there are trees, uh, it, they're called the Atas and, and the Anima Seeds, that will give you different buffs, like some will make you produce more harvest, and you literally just can't fit it all in your inventory. What do you do? You run all the way to the bank, then run all the way back to the patch? No. You can, Mr. Gnome Leprechaun here will... Uh, if you click exchange, okay, you can store equipment in him. Everybody knows that. I get that. But did you know that if you use anything you harvest on him, he will just note it all for free? What? Where does it tell you that? Maybe if you talk to him? Can you hold my stuff? It says nothing about exchanging uh, stuff for free for noted items. And it doesn't just work on... I mean, it is, it is anything you harvest. But, like, it works on pretty much any farming or any wood-related... It doesn't work on logs, I don't think. But that's such a huge thing. That saves so much time and so much inventory space. And the game doesn't tell you about it. You can just note whatever you want with this guy for no charge. That's so huge for farming runs or harvesting anything, and it's just nowhere to be found, so thanks again, Jagex. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, well, I think that is going to wrap up this special little episode. Let me know what you guys thought. I thought it was, just a, it was just a fun little idea I had earlier today, and, you know, a lot of these things I think may help some people because there are so many of these things, especially that freaking leprechaun thing, that would have saved me so much time if I had known about that earlier on. And it's just, I think a lot of the things you're supposed to just figure out on your own, which I get, and maybe that's what they were going for, but some of them are so esoteric and so, like, just, how would you ever figure these things out? So let me know what you guys thought about this video, maybe I'll do another one, or maybe I'll do something more similar to it. Uh, I like just, you know, doing videos in this game, because I love this game, and, well, let's be honest, it's what you guys are here for, so, <laughs> might as well make the most of it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like if you want. Subscribe. We just hit 100 subscribers which is amazing. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did watch this whole video, I appreciate it. I'll see you in something new sometime very soon. I don't know what it is yet. You might, but I don't. So I will see you guys then. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.